Well, hello there. Welcome to my first RC submarine video. I thought that to mark this special occasion, uh, I would present to you something that's very dear to my heart. This is my first ever successful RC submarine, uh, the 196 scale USS Blueback that you see uh, right here. Uh, this was originally a haul kit that was purchased from a company called uh, the Nautilus Dry Docks. Um, but for those of you who have been in the RC submarine hobby for the last uh, 10 or 20 years, uh, you might recognize this as uh, being the, a kit that was released by a company called Small World Models. Uh, my particular boat was actually a more recent cast uh, done by the Nautilus Dry Docks. Uh, th this is actually a fiberglass hull, very, very uh, sturdy. And um, as you can see here, I, I've painted her in this uh, well, very simple uh, black and uh, red oxide uh, paint scheme uh, that you see in so commonly on uh, modern uh, submarines. Uh, the, the sail number actually cor it does correspond to the USS Blueback, which is uh, one of the boats that was built as part of the barbell class of uh, diesel electric submarines for the US Navy. And uh, this class is actually one of the few um, uh, submarine classes that the US Navy had that was both diesel electric, diesel electrically powered, but also has a teardrop hull that you see uh, that's so common with uh, modern submarines nowadays. Very, very short and compact little boat, which I absolutely love. Uh, the whole boat from bow to stern, I believe, uh, measures something maybe around like, uh, I think 20 inches or so. Anyways, very portable, very compact, great for running in uh, the water fountains and uh, smaller ponds around the city. Uh, so I've actually uh, custom built and designed the watertight cylinder system uh, that's inside. I will show you guys very, very shortly. Uh, to actually get the hull to open, um, the kit itself came with what's called the uh, a Z-cut. What the Z-cut Z is, is uh, the hull is split right along the center line uh, where the black paint meets the red paint. And if you notice that the nose cone here uh, is actually attached to the upper hull and we can see a little, uh, little seam right here where the top hull separates from the bottom. And at the very uh, stern of the boat, I have a little nut that's holding the top half of the boat in place. And what I love about this system is I don't actually need to have an Allen key or any tools to get the hull to open. So let's get the hull open all right lift it up and slide forward onto the back all right so this is my uh, own custom design and uh, built watertight cylinder uh, moving from bow to stern at the very tip we have the water pump that's responsible for uh, emptying uh, for actually filling and emptying the main ballast tank that you see at the center of the boat. And this ballast tank rests at approximately the, the center of uh, gravity of the boat. Uh, you know, it was a bit of a trial and error trying to figure out where, where to put a little ballast tank, but I think I got it <laughs> dialed in pretty, pretty well. Uh, this ballast system uh, is actually for static or what I call semi-static uh, diving operation. It's known as a vented ballast tank system. And what it does is uh, it's very, very straightforward. This water pump empties water in and out of the tank, right? And the very top of the tank, we actually have a little uh, snorkel tube, a uh, little breathing tube. And this attaches to a brass pipe that runs through the sail or conning tower of the boat and up uh, the snorkel that's right here. I'm not sure if you can see, uh, it might be too dark, a little hole that's at the top of the snorkel. And what this tube does is actually allows air to escape from the submarine when uh, water is feeding the tank to, to dive. And also it, allow, it allows air to come into the ballast tank uh, when the pump is drawing the water out of the ballast tank for the surface operation. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that with this system, uh, the boat is actually set up such that uh, when the ballast tank is fully uh, full or submerged, 
um, the entire well, snorkel has to be, or a good, good portion of the snorkel has to be just above the water uh, surface in order to let air uh, back in to surface the boat. Uh, but this does have a nice inherent safety feature in that you know, the boat always has slightly positive uh, uh, buoyancy. So um, you know, in case the battery runs out or the throttle cuts out, uh, the boat will surface uh, by itself, provided that there's no flooding <laughs> inside these dry spaces. Uh, between the water pump and the ballast tank, we have a servo-operated pinch valve. It's a very, very uh, uh, simple system. You can see this little uh, micro servo operates a little bra brass roller attached to the servo arm, arm. And as the servo rotates clockwise and counterclockwise, the rotor is actually releasing the black rubber hose that you see there, allowing water to flow freely in and out of the ballast tank. And at the same time, the servo arm is also hitting uh, one of well, one uh, of two of uh, these micro switches that are responsible for uh, running the pump either forward or reverse to uh, uh, fill or empty uh, the ballast tank. Uh, following that, we have the radio receiver. Uh, I'm using the uh, classic, I guess we can call it classic at this point, uh, 75 megahertz system. This is a four channel radio and the antenna is actually coiled around this uh, component tray that you see uh, in white, it goes below the tray. And right below that is uh, the main battery, which is uh, right now is a 7.2 volt uh, nickel metal hydride uh, six cell battery. Uh, very reliable, you know, very, um, very heavy, uh, which means that I don't necessarily need too much lead ballast there on the bottom hull. The battery itself uh, both acts as a power source and uh, the ballast uh, and that part of the hull, right? Uh, there is a little brass tube that runs through the ballast tank carrying the uh, servo connections uh, from the rear uh, electronic components such as the uh, uh, electronic speed control that you see uh, at the back uh, uh, right there and the two servos operating the um, diving plane and the rudder. Uh, so the, the main motor itself is a standard uh, 380 size motor made it to a, um, a 3 to one planetary gearbox. So a uh, very, very simple system, very reliable. Um, I actually spent the better part of a week trying to, uh, you know, trim the, this boat from, uh, you know, to get the right surface and the submerged trim, which was a bit tricky, you know, but to help me, I actually had a lot of flotation foam that you see here. Uh, this is actually a high density packing foam. It's none of that, uh, styrofoam uh, type of foam, but it's very, very dense, comparable to the uh, in insulation foam that you see uh, found in so many houses uh, here. So um, to do a quick little demo, um, the boat is actually on. I'm not sure if you can hear this little servos uh, j jittering away. Uh, to cut out the noise, I've fitted capacitors to both the motor uh, at the back and the pump motor at, at the front. But even so, I still get a this maybe I still get a bit of interference, uh, slight, but uh, nothing to cause any major dis disturbances. Uh, to help that, I've actually fitted a little ferrite bead there around the, the the servo cable. It's just this little ballast tank servo that's that jitters occasionally. Uh, the rest are okay. So to do a little quick demo, the way I've mapped out the stick is very much like a model airplane. On the left stick. We have the throttle. Um, do a little demo. You see the, the prop, prop spinning. Uh, so on the same stick, left and right, we've got the little um, uh, ball ball ballast pump actuation servo. Let me show you. So now it's moving. It's, I'm not, I don't want to hit the switch right now because there's actually some residual water uh, inside the water pump. And if I do let it run, it's going to spray water. <laughs> All over the place. So, uh, moving on to the right stick, we have the rudder control, all right? And uh, by pushing the left, the right stick forward and backward, we've got the operation of the diving planes that you see here. Yeah. So at the back of the boat, uh, you can see that uh, I fitted the 
these rubber bellows, which are very common, commonly used to seal uh, linkages uh, for RC subs. Uh, and right below that is a flexible um, uh, coupler that I've uh, fabricated uh, to connect the main drive shaft, uh, main motor out output shaft to the main propeller. And right below that is are some uh, tire balancing weights attached to the bottom hull with some double-sided tape so that I can uh, balance the weight of the boat uh, and to offset the weight of the front uh, battery there. So overall, uh, very, very happy with the performance of this little boat. Uh, I've recently had its maiden voyage a few days ago, and uh, I've got some little short clips of that uh, to show you guys very, very shortly. So hopefully uh, you guys enjoy that uh, little video. And uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more RC submarine content. And uh, actually, uh, to install this to the hull, you kind of have to... Uh, I forgot to mention this to connect this to the little tube that's up there in the sail um, to uh, get the hull attached. But anyways, that's it. Uh, that's it for now. So uh, if you want to see more RC submarine content, make sure to leave a like and a subscribe to the channel. Uh, got a lot more videos coming up to show you guys. So uh, hope enjoy uh, the little run that I had on this main maiden voyage, and uh, we'll see you next time.